have been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am serving you tonight a very special dessert wine from the cellars of the King of the Belgians, who during a brief period of intense intimacy presented me with all the bottles that in existence. <laughs> <laughs> the secret of its unique quality, unknown. But it is said to possess the power to open the eyes of even the blindest among us. To life. To life. And to the only other reality. to someone. 
younger than myself. <laughs> oh, no doubt he's been denouncing the wickedness of the world and quoting Martin Luther. Oh, dearest Frederica, all you are witnessing is his latest crisis in his love affair with God. Not with God, Mrs. Eggerman. With you. Me? You may not have noticed, but he is madly, helplessly in love with you. Is that really the truth? Yes. He told me so himself. The poor dear boy. How ridiculous of him, and yet how charming. <laughs> You only knew how insecure I constantly feel, how complicated the marriage state seems to be. I adore old Frederick, of course. But this second then he ran down towards the lake. <laughs> to gaze over the ornamental waters, how touching. <laughs> is hunting everywhere for his wife, and all the uh, children appear to vanish. So when I saw you sneaking up the stairs... I ripped my hand getting up from dinner and all that. A few more of me. <laughs> is this all right? Yes, of course. Sit down. the stockings. I never see why not. The back of the point where we were so rudely interrupted last week, aren't we? Not quite. If you remember, we 
progressed a step further. How true. I imagine neither of us is contemplating a repeat performance. Good heavens, with your wife in the house, and my lover and his wife, and my daughter. <laughs> and my devoted old friend, your mother. <laughs> so many years of muddle. Of course there is your wife, but I thought perhaps just perhaps you might be in I see a woman that I've loved for a long time who entranced me all over again when I came to her rooms. It gives me such genuine pleasure that in spite of myself I came here for the sheer delight Excuse me, oh, of course. But when my eyes are not open, <coughs> which is most of the time, all I see is a girl in a pink dress. Using a canary, running through a sunlit garden to hug me with the gate. As if I'd come home from Timbuktu instead of a municipal courthouse three blocks away.
<laughs> uh, oh, forgive me, Countess, I was looking for my wife. Mr. Ragavan, how can I face you after that exhibition at dinner, throwing myself in your head? On the contrary, no, I found it most morale building. <laughs> Not often these days that a beautiful woman does me that honor. I didn't. I beg your pardon. I didn't do you that honor. It was just a charade, a failed charade. In my madness, I thought I could make my husband jealous. Oh, 
afraid marriage isn't one of the easier relationships, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ackerman, for a woman, it's impossible. Uh, it's not all that possible for men. <laughs> men. Huh? Look at you. A man of an age when a woman who is lucky, if a drunken old man pinches her derriere at a village fete, and yet you have managed to acquire the youngest, prettiest, Hate you being happy. I hate anyone being happy. <laughs> The gig should be ready at the stables. Oh, Henrik, darling, I do hope the horses will be smart. I so detest driving a gig when the horses are not smart. Think of how I adore you. Think of how much you love me. If I were perfect for you, wouldn't you tire of me? Let all the birds nest in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Henrik, quick, I will miss the train. Oh, I know it's often 
discouraging. And to hope for something too much is Astounding. When I was your age, I wanted everything. The moon. And yachts. <laughs> and jewels. And villas on the Riviera. And I got them too. <laughs> count. <laughs> he was my first <coughs> lover. I can see his face now. Such eyes. And mustache like a brigand. <laughs> he gave me a wooden ring. A wooden ring. It had been in his family for centuries, it seemed. But I said to myself, what sort of man would give you a wooden ring? <laughs> so I tossed him out. Right then and there. And now, who knows? He might have been The love of my life. <coughs> <coughs> to think I was actually saying how I hate you being happy. It's as if I carry around some terrible curse. I'm sorry. Sir! You accompany me to the villa. I think the situation speaks for I'll itself. Marcus, I'll dare you want me to impulse you, will you? Whatever the provocation, I remain a civilized man. The lawyer and I are merely going to play a little Russian roulette. Russian roulette? Well, sir, are you ready, sir? I, I beg your pardon, ready for what? Russian roulette. Oh, Russian roulette, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's for the pistol, isn't it? <laughs> when you spin the... Uh, well, why not? Excuse me, but have A weekend in the country, so we can't do the castle I like am. A weekend in the country, well. Which was the obscenity town? What is it? What happened? Dear Miss Oakville, my husband and Mr. Eggerman are dueling in the pavilion. Are you insane? You left them. You lunatic! <laughs> You've killed him! Killed him? My dear Miss Armfelt, he merely grazed his ear. <laughs> I trust his performance in the law courts is a trifle more professional. Charlotte? I am prepared to forgive you, dear. <laughs> But I feel this house is no longer a suitable place for us. Yes, my darling, I agree. You will pack my things and meet me in the stables. <laughs> I will have the car ready. Yes, dear. Oh, go back this. You became a tiger for me. Men are stupid, men are... <laughs>
extraordinary, isn't it? To hold a muzzle to one's temple, <coughs> and yet to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking hand perhaps is an acid after all. Does it hurt? It hurts. Spiritually. You've heard, I imagine, about the evening's other event. No. What? Henry. And I. Run off together. Great. 
you much. It has already smiled twice. It has? Twice? For the young? And for the fools? Yes, the smile for the fools was particularly broad. <laughs>
begin with the two new stars lighting up the night over at the Walter Kerr Theater. It's a casting coup that's had theater folks buzzing since it was first announced this spring. Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch stepping into a little night music. And this past Sunday, Peters and Stritch made their official debuts in the roles of Desiree Armfelt and Madame Armfelt, roles previously played in this revival by Catherine Zeta-Jones and Angela Lansbury. On stage caught up with Peters and Stritch shortly after the opening night curtain rang down to talk about working on this Stephen Sondheim Hugh Wheeler classic. We spoke with Peters about performing the show's signature song, Send in the Clowns. Isn't it bliss? Don't you approve? It surprises me every night. I never know exactly how what's going to happen in it, which I like. I kind of know, like, sort of... Uh, uh, what country I'm going to, but I don't quite know what's going to happen when I get there. That's how I describe it, you know, so it's, it's exciting because of that. What's it like for you, you know, being one of Sondheim's greatest interpreters, which you are, to be back in a show of his? Um, you know, for, for, for me, it's like seeing you back at home. What's that like for you? I love, I love uh, Steve's music. I just, I do, you know. Um, there's always something, you think it's about something and then you realize it's about something, you know. He's just uh, a surprising writer, a startling writer, as everybody knows. But when you, when you start to work on a song, it just can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Liaison, what's happened to them? Liaison. The producers of this show are very understanding, they're very creative, they're interested in doing interesting, well-chosen, thought-out stuff, and I compliment them for it. They, they, they gave me a lot of previews. They gave both uh, Bernadette and myself complete two weeks with no critics or no opinions or no just to work on your part and that's what i did and it paid off it got i had lots of problems with this and uh but hugh wheeler presents you with a sensational book for a musical and uh and steve sondheim with one of the best scores of his career so what more could you ask for so i really didn't hold back in 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 my willingness to work hard i did and it paid off in other news harlem week is Welcome back. As we told you at the top of the show, this week brought one of the biggest events of the Broadway summer season, the debut of Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch in A Little Night Music. Here now with her review of this latest incarnation of the Stephen Sondheim Hugh Wheeler classic is Roma Torrey. For theater lovers, it doesn't get much better than this. Sondheim's A Little Night Music, starring two beloved Broadway veterans doing what they do best in a consummate production that sings its heart out. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Send in the clouds. Mark it in memory. This performance by Bernadette Peters is the stuff of theater legend. Understated and wrenching, she portrays Desiree Armfelt with an effortlessness that suggests it's the part she was born to play. All her life's experiences seem to be encompassed in this virtuosic interpretation, climactically distilled in that one glorious song. Following Catherine Zeta-Jones' Tony-winning take on the role, Peters brings a natural quality that Zeta-Jones worked hard to achieve. And while both succeeded beautifully, Peters is a better fit. As a much-lauded actress of a certain age facing the ravages of time and loneliness, Desiree, with a blossoming daughter, is ready, finally, to settle down. A former lover, Frederick, played with charismatic excellence by Alexander Hansen, is married to a much younger woman, and now the mistress of a chauvinistic cad, Desiree's prospects for future happiness appear dim. Sondheim's music and Hugh Wheeler's book capture that sense of longing and regret with profound depth. 
The message is further driven home in the character of Desiree's imperious mother, the elderly retired courtesan, Madame Armfelt. Elaine Stritch taking over for Angela Lansbury brings a unique quality to the role that threatens to hijack it in the Stritch persona. Feisty to the extreme, she does in the end succeed in crafting a balanced and deeply felt performance, revealing a touching vulnerability that is crystallized in that other brilliant number, Liaisons. Raisins. <laughs> ah. Liaisons. Trevor Nunn's streamlined production has improved since opening last year. The company, like a truly fine wine, has aged to perfection. This is a masterful work, masterfully performed. And with an abundance of superlatives, a little night music is rich indeed. Roma Tori for On Stage. Welcome back. It was one of the most highly anticipated events of the summer theater season, the debut of Bernadette Peters and Elaine Stritch in the Broadway revival of the Stephen Sondheim Hugh Wheeler musical, A Little Night Music. Earlier this summer, this celebrated pair of performers stepped into the roles of Desiree and Madame Armfelt, roles previously played in this production by Catherine Zeta-Jones and Angela Lansbury. On stage's Roma Tori recently got the chance to chat with these great ladies of the stage about taking on a little night music. Are we a pair? Me here I lost on the ground. You in midair. Send in the cloud. 